Let's start with uh, the assignment uh, before I get into our new notes. And I won't do all of them, but let's do uh, number one here real quick. Um, we're solving this triangle, so let's write down what we know. Measure M is 40 degrees. We know L is 90 degrees. Right away, we know this one's 50 then. Remember, the two acute angles have to add up to the other 90 degrees. So if one's 40, the other one must be 50 to add up to 90. Uh, we know measure MK is 8, and we also know that's our hypotenuse. That's important to mark. We haven't even done any trig yet. That is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Let's write down our three trig functions. We got sine, oops, let me write it as so ka toa. Ugly looking H right there. So ka toa. There you go. Um, and since they gave us 40, I'm going to use the 40. So if this is my 40 across, that's my opposite. And then the only other side left has to be the adjacent. So if I'm looking for, let's see here, they want KL first. So KL is the opposite, and I know the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse. I know my angle. I don't know one side. I do know one side. So I have everything except for one thing I don't know, an opposite side. This is definitely sine because it has opposite and hypotenuse. So we write sine of the angle. You have to put it like this, 40 degrees. So the sine of 40 would be the opposite, KL, over the hypotenuse, 8. Cross multiply here, so 1 times KL. Put that 8 in front of the sine 40. Always put the sine stuff in, uh, second. And then we just grab our calculators. You can see I'm in degrees up here. So I'm going to find the sine of 40 first. 40, and we'll find the sine of him, and I'll take him times 8. And I get KL is 5 point uh, nearest hundredth, so 1, 4. Now, you could use Pythagorean Theorem at this point to figure out what LM is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So it's my legs squared. So LM squared plus KL squared, my other leg has to equal my hypotenuse squared, mk squared. But uh, I know two of these. KL is 5.14, and mk is 8 squared. Okay, well, I know 8 squared is 64. The only thing I don't know is what's 5.14 if I square it. So it's 26.4196. And I'm going to keep four decimal places for no particular reason, except then I don't have to round him. Equals 64. And then it's an M. 64, and we'll take away the 26. 64 minus uh, 26.4196. Equals 37.5804, and then I just have to square root both sides to solve it. Now, you do get plus or minus when you do this, but it doesn't make sense to have a uh, negative length for the side of a triangle. So 6.13, uh, so that is 6.13. Now, in practice, everybody, uh, when I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, this is how my work would actually look. I don't need to write down the formula first. I know my two legs. Okay, I'm going to call one of them A, the side I'm looking for. A squared plus KL, which I know. And so A squared equals, and what I would do then is I go to my calculator and I type in 8 squared, oops, I type in 8 squared minus 5.14 squared equals, that's my 37.5804, and then I hit the square root button, and I get my A equals 6.13. So a lot less writing than I do when I'm actually explaining it. But now I've got my triangle solved. So that's essentially what we're doing. Let's look at the new stuff now. Today we're going to be doing uh, trig word problems, but really everybody think of them as triangles, solving triangles, because that's all you're doing. The word problem part just comes into play because uh, you have to figure out where the triangle is in the word problem. And many times they will give you diagrams already, so you don't have to worry about it. But there are a few definitions or terms we have to know. 
uh, here's our steps for solving these things. That step one is huge. You gotta draw a diagram of it. If they don't give you one, draw one yourself. And when you draw that, look for that triangle. Label your angles, okay? So you have stuff to reference, okay? You can talk about angle B and angle A and angle C, however you name it. Uh, and then you're gonna use some trig to find either the side or angle that you're looking for. Now some two terms that you need to know. Angle of depression. Angle of depression would be like you're standing at the top of the triangle, and if you looked horizontally, and then if you tilted your head down to look at something on the ground down here, it's how far did you have to tilt your head down to see that object on the ground, the angle of depression, measured from the horizontal. The angle of elevation is you're standing on the ground, that's your horizontal, and you look up at an angle and you see an object. Now, because the ground would be horizontal with this looking straight forward line of sight, these two are alternate interior angles. So they are congruent, it turns out. Angle of depression, angle of elevation. So you can use that sometimes to help you solve these problems. So let's look at an example. See if I can hide some of this stuff on the right-hand side so we have a little more room. There we go. Find the angle of elevation if you are standing 400 feet away from the building and you look up to see it pack, should be peak, <laughs> 850 feet in the air. So if we think about that, we are standing somewhere out here and we're looking up here and we're seeing the peak of our uh, building here. And how far are we away? We are 400 feet away. Note it says that right there. You're standing 400 feet away from the building. Uh, the peak of it, this whole height here, is 850 feet in the air. And you can see our right triangle now because buildings are built perpendicular to the ground. Otherwise, you get the leaning tower of Pisa. And so... Uh, there we go. Let's figure out um, the angle of elevation you have to look at. So that's you looking up. This is our angle of elevation. What's this angle? Now I know this does perfect right triangle, but we're going to ignore your height. And so that's our triangle. We're looking for A, no, not H. We're looking for this angle. So let's call it angle A. So there's my triangle. I'm looking for angle A, the angle of elevation. How far do I, what angle do I have to look up at? Um, let's see, they gave me, if I'm looking for this angle, I gotta use two sides I know. That's opposite and adjacent. TOA, tangent equals opposite over adjacent is what I wanna use. So I'll write tangent of angle A, which I don't know, is my opposite over adjacent, or tangent of A is 850 over 400. And so now I have to inverse tan. And what you really do is you inverse tan the left and you inverse tan the right. Now it's hard to squeeze it in on the right hand side. But on the left hand side, the function does something to the, to the A, the inverse undoes it. So you just get A equals whatever the inverse tangent of 850 over 400 is. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to go 850 divided by 400 equals 2.125. Now I'm going to go to my inverse tangent. Some of you have to hit second, then tangent. I have a button for it, inverse tangent. And so angle A must be 64, we'll call it 0.8 degrees. So I have to look up at a pretty steep angle. Find your triangle, label your triangle, so you have something to write when you do your functions, and then solve it. We've got our building here again. From the top of a tower, the angle of depression. So I'm at the very top here. I'm going to draw a horizontal line so I can do my angle of depression. And it is a 60-degree angle to a point on the ground. I'm going to call that my point on the ground. Uh, some stake, I guess it said. And it's 60 degrees angle of depression. That's angle. 
The top of the tower is 80 feet. That's not a very tall tower, 80 feet, but we'll go with it. What was my last tower? 850 feet. That's a big tower. This one's only 80 feet high. That's fine. Uh, the top of the tower is 80 feet above the ground, so that's this measurement right here. Um, because we have the ground down here, and it's parallel to this horizontal up here. But this is 60. This is also 60 degrees. There's our alternate interior angles being put to use. How far is the stake from the foot of the tower? I'm going to call this A. I'll call this B. Uh, so we're looking for this side down here. Uh, I don't have my highlighter. So we're looking for a P down here. So let's see what we know. We have ourselves an angle. That's good. We could find the other angle if we needed to. Things got to be 30. Um, here's our right angle. Just like so. Um, how far is the stake from the ground? So they want us to find. Oops. Darn it. It's hard without my highlighter. Let me pull my highlighter back. There it is. So we're looking for this side right here. Uh, we have opposite. We're looking for adjacent, so let's choose tangent, opposite over adjacent. Again, using the tangent, we'll have tangent. This time I'm going to put in angle P of 60 degrees is opposite 80 over adjacent, which we'll call AP. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, when we cross multiply, you get AP times the tangent of 60. Notice I put that in front of it, equals 80. Now to get the AP alone, you're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 60. Remember, tangent of 60 is just some number. We just don't know what that number is until we grab a calculator. So it's 80 over tangent 60. So I go 80 divided by, I have to go 60 tangent and then equals. I'm getting we are 46.2. And everything was measured in feet. So we're about 46.2. 0.2 feet away. Now, let's do this with a, um, oh, using the 30, 60, 90 triangle theorem to see if we get the same thing, because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which means across from the 30 is the small side, that's x, the hypotenuse is 2x, and the long leg is x root 3. Um, so if I wanted to find out x, the base, I could just use the fact that x root 3 is equal to 80. I could figure out what x is. It's 80 divided by the square root of 3. So let's find out what that is on our calculator. 80 divided by 3, we'll square root it, equals, and I get 46.2. So you can see we get the same thing even if we were to use trigger not, or, uh, use the 30, 60, 90 uh, theorem. Uh, and our last problem here, uh, last example, we got a ladder leaning against a house. It makes an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. So I've shown you the ladder here. But what we're going to do is turn this ladder sideways. When you turn it sideways, it looks just like a, a board. And that board then is the ladder being leaned up against the house. Okay. And it makes a 30 degree angle with the ground. So there's our ladder leaned up against the house, making that 30 degree angle with the ground. And the foot of the ladder is seven feet away. So this distance is seven feet. Uh, how long is the ladder? So we're looking for, let's call it A, B, and C. We're looking for a, B, how long the ladder is. By the way, I do not recommend putting your ladder at a 30 degree angle with the ground. You'd want something a little more steeper, certainly. Uh, but regardless, this is how the person has done it. So let's work with what we're given. Uh, so I know angle A. I know the adjacent side. I'm looking for this long side across from the 90 degrees. That's the hypotenuse. So Let's label these things. There's my hypotenuse. Crossing the 30, that would be my opposite side. So that's O right there. 
and then this is my adjacent side. So to pick my tang or my trig function now, um, I don't want to use anything with opposite because I don't know opposite. Remember, I'm looking for a hypotenuse. I want that to be my variable. So I want to use the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, you can see, is the cosine function. So cosine of angle A would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or the cosine of 30 degrees equals our adjacent side over hypotenuse, and we can just call it H or AB. Uh, cross multiply, again the H, put that first, times cosine 30. One times seven is seven. So H equals seven over the cosine of 30 degrees. Let's grab our calculators. 7 divided by 30 cosine equals 8.1 feet. That's how tall um, the ladder is. I am kind of curious about how long um, this side is. Now, this would be the uh, short side. Remember, the short side in a 30, 60, 90 triangle uh, it goes uh, x, and this is 2x up there. So if I cut that 2x, if I cut it in half, that gives me 4.05. So 4.05 is how high your ladder would reach. So this would be what I would call a really uh, silly use of a ladder to reach 4.4 .4 feet high off the ground. All right. So here's your assignment. It's pretty straightforward. Use the diagram, find the distance in this case across uh, this bridge. But you can see how, you, hopefully you can see how you'd attack it. See this little triangle right here? You know how tall it is. You know this uh, angle right here. You should be able to find this distance. And because these are all uh, congruent triangles, they're all exactly the same. Once you know this distance, you know this one, this one. You'll know all these little sections. You'll just have to add them up to get that full distance across. Hot air balloon, 600 feet above the a ground, so it's already drawn for you. And you can see your friend way down below. 20, you're in a hub, so you're up in the air. So it's 20 degrees below. That's your angle of depression. Uh, they're trying to find out uh, how far from the point on the balloon is he from the point on the ground. Okay, so you're looking for this distance right here. Now remember, this is 20, this is also 20. So if this is your 20 degree angle down here, you're looking for the adjacent side, and you know the opposite. That should help you with your trig function, adjacent and opposite. Then your last one, we have a golf problem here person's up here teeing off. Uh, this is their line of sight and an angle of depression of 10 degrees. They can see uh, the hole in the ground where they're shooting for. The distance they are away is straight across, not measuring the elevation here, is 185 degrees away. So we're looking for how high it is, this distance right here. But that's the same as, I shouldn't draw it all the way down there. I want it even with the pin, like this. But they essentially have that triangle just drawn right here. And so I would use the triangle they gave me. Okay, they tell you 10. This 185, that's that 185 also up there. And here's what you're looking for. How high is it above that hole? Looks like you've got the adjacent side and you're looking